pop culture. Thank you, Joe Mandica, Australia's gift to the music world. Joe is the writer, producer, and performer of our classic pop culture theme song, and he is a true friend of this show. And how are you doing, everybody? This is your pal and fellow fan of pop culture, Steve Ludwig, welcoming you to another edition of Steve Ludwig's Classic Pop Culture, right here at PlanetLudwig.com. And hey, while you're here at PlanetLudwig.com, or come on back, check out the Beatles Hour with Steve Ludwig. We have Planet Ludwig After Dark, Beatles Hour After Dark, all that cool stuff you can check out on the homepage. But for us right now, here we are, show number 166, and our guest is legendary British vocalist Roger Chapman, the former lead singer of the progressive rock band Family, as well as Streetwalkers, and of course, of his own solo career. I spoke with Roger just yesterday as this show premieres, and we'll hear that conversation right after we check out Roger in this video, performing The Playtime Is Over from his brand new 2021 album, Life in the Pond. Enjoy. Never try. 
such a tale Stairway to heaven Or highway to hell A cauldron of whispers A slip of the tongue No smoke without fire It's time to move on And it's playtime Roger Chapman, Chapo, has always marched to his own beat, and how grateful we are for that. As vocalist and co-writer in the band Family, whose 1968 debut album, the classic psychedelic Music in a Doll's House, to his just-released gem, 2021's Life in the Pond, and everything in between, Mr. Chapman has guided us through over 50 years of beautiful musical journeys. Ian Anderson and Peter Gabriel, among others, have cited Chapo as a major influence. He's been awarded Artist of the Year, and in 2004, he received the Lifetime Achievement Award. Thankfully, Roger didn't take that as a signal to stop making music. (laughs) And I'm pinching myself that I'm lucky enough to speak with him right now. Welcome to Classic Pop Culture, the one and only Roger Chapman. Roger, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Steve. Pleasure to talk to you. Yeah, and thank you for the um, the big edit statements. <laughs> You're welcome, and and it, and it's all deserved. Well, that doesn't fit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I tell you, Roger. Congratulations on life in the pond. I mean, top to bottom, it, it's brilliant. Well, thank you, blimey. Well, good. I mean. Obviously, Polly and I were pleased with the, the outcome, so I'm pleased others like it as well. Yes, the two of you, 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 co-wrote, uh, you co-wrote all the songs, uh, except, yeah. the, except the one we'll get to later with the Oscar Brown Jr. song. But um, you guys have, have just hung together, haven't you? Th- th- just about through it yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah, one, one way or another, obviously, um, I, we met bef- uh, before Polly joined family. And I think it was at my invitation he joined family. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've been kind of 
close on and off ever since, you know, ever since, what, yeah. 1969, 70 or something. <laughs> yeah, boy, and we're, we're thankful for that. You know, before we go too far, uh, Roger, I want to tell you, I had posted on Facebook that um, – I'd be interviewing you. And I got a message from uh, someone on Facebook, and he told me to say hello to you and that he's a chum. Tony Bramwell? Oh, blimey. Yeah. Yeah. Gee whiz. I've not heard from Tony for, oh, I mean, it's got to be, I'll say 30 years, and guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was wow. Gonna, not you, heard from him for well, a long time. You guys go. say hello back. I'm not on Facebook. But yeah, absolutely. You guys go way it. back, huh? But uh, yeah, 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 really, from all oh, 50 years. Yeah. Well, anyway, really? he's, he sends his best. I wanted to make sure uh, <laughs> make sure I got that out there to you. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Um, you know, do you, you, you produced Life in the Pod and a lot of your other works. Uh, a few years ago, I interviewed Kim Simmons of Savoy Brown, and he produced... Uh, as we were talking that that show, he had produced his latest CD, and he said, for him to be a producer on his own record, it's a pain in the ass, if I can use his words. <laughs> <laughs> Do you enjoy being uh, producing yourself? <laughs> well, I find it more of a pain in the ass if I can't get on with it. So oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I, I, <laughs> I have the. I'm quite satisfied with the lesser of the two evils. <laughs> I guess, as in life, I guess, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, um, with life in the pot. First of all, how long did this take to make? If you don't mind me asking, I'm a, I'm a layman. I don't play any music no, instruments. Okay. We, we started uh, end of nineteen, mm-hmm. uh, and it was just. Uh, Polly lives in, well, he actually lives up in the Midlands in Worcestershire, but he's got a an apartment down in Putney, which is quite near me in London, uh, with a studio, with a home studio, you know. Yeah. And um, we, I mean, we see each other occasionally. Obviously, we, we re, uh, refurbished family for two or three years. Yes, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we, obviously we got quite close again there. Um, and I said... Oh, do you mind if I, I've got some songs written? Do you mind if I come over and demo? And he says, "No, by all means, come and do it." You know. So I went over and we got along so well in the studio, which was actually dark side of the stairs. Yes. Then we said, "Why don't we just carry on?" And you know, and, and we kind of, you know, co-write, we produ- co-produce, co-write, puts all the um, instruments on, really, you know, except for Jeffrey, the guitar player. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just went on from there but, but we could only work kind of uh, well only a, a month after that we got had the lockdown from the virus yes. nonsense mm-hmm. so uh, we couldn't actually meet up very much then um, and he would come down to London maybe once a month and I'd see him for a couple of days a month um, and then we got completely locked down I don't not not too long really I mean I can't tell you the days, but I mean, yeah. for, if I say from the beginning of 19 until April this year, mm-hmm. then it took us that long, but, you know, with really, you know, I mean, it probably took us a, a six weeks to do, you know. Sure, yeah, total time. Now, you're in London. Yeah, yeah. How, how is it with, uh, with, with the pandemic and everything there? Are you guys, can you, are you free to go about or... Oh, we, we go about limited numbers yeah. apparently, but only f- I think this is. Uh, it's I think it's July nineteenth. They say they're going to pull all the stops out. Nobody wears masks. Okay, everybody can go anywhere. Mm-hmm. But the, but then there are like fifty percent of the people who are seriously panicking. <laughs> oh sure, yeah. So <laughs> you know, my, my... but uh, you know, I mean, we a lot of us, uh, uh, certainly of my age, have been double jabbed. Which means apparently we're free from it anyway. Me too. Yeah. Yep. Uh, my wife. Um, my wife is a so, nurse, and you know, you mentioned about the no masks. I, I, I like I've been double jabbed myself. I'm 67, um, yeah. and she still kind of freaks out a little bit when she sees me going around without a mask on. You yeah. know, because she's seen some of the horrors. So. I can almost, when you said, you know, some people are a little panicky about it. I, it's, yeah, it, it's, yeah. it's a touchy situation, isn't it, Roger? 
Well, it is. And, you know, you hear about, you know, some people, if some people have said to somebody else, why aren't you wearing a mask? The person that's not wearing a mask and kind of beat them up. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. checking them out. And, you know, I mean, you see this in the newspaper. And, so, yes, you know, there are people out there who just refuse to wear a mask. And mm-hmm. if you question them, and you're going to get on the wrong side of it. Yeah, it is. It is such quite, a, a quite touch, difficult. Such, yeah, and you know, later on, I want to get to a um, to a song from Life in the Pond too uh, that you did, which uh, about media and politicians. We'll get to that, but um, you, you have ten originals on Life in the Pond, but you you do yeah. have the cover, uh, the Snake by Oscar Brown Jr. I mean, that's a super cover. What what made you, you decide to to cover that song? Well, the thing is, I, I didn't realize and only the past sort of a uh, few months since it came out on the album, that it was a well-known song. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've, I only heard this song probably 18 months ago for the very first time. I listen to Jazz FM, usually when I'm having a shower, as people do. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> Sorry, Jazz FM, I didn't mean it like that. But, uh, <laughs> you listen but very then, cleanly. And it came on, it, it, the, the, um, it wasn't actually, oh yes, it was, it was the Oscar Brown version. Yes. It came on and I wondered what it was. So I, um, you know, as you do with your iPhone, you put it near a radio and it tells you who it is and all that yep. nonsense. Yeah, that's scary, and isn't I, it? Uh, <laughs> that you can do anyway, stuff Anyway, like I, I kind of downloaded the song and I said to Paul, I said, found this great song. I love, just love the lyrics um, and the content of it. And mm-hmm. I said, a really good song. What, shall we have a go at it? Just, you know, off the cuff, we've been writing... And probably it was quite a good thing for us to actually just have a rest of trying to write stuff, you know, or attempting to write, just to do something that was already done. Mm-hmm. And so we tried it almost like the original. And then I found another version of it, which was sort of, and I can't think of the guy's name at the minute. But again, a good version, and we, we kind of approached that for a while. But then it just wasn't kind of clicking in for us. We were just kind of thinking, well, it's the same as the others. No, there's no point to this. It's yeah. just the same arrangement and things. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I heard the groove there that's there. I heard that groove or had the feel for the groove. And I said, well, actually, if we halve the time, and um, it's exactly the same speed, uh-huh. but just half the time. And it's a Roger Chapman original. song now. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, that, that's well, so you. But, it's so but I mean, you. But, but Polly did all the arrangements. For yeah. Me. I mean, it's just astounding, right? You're delivering. I, 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 I wrote down this line. I mean, you you knew I was a goddamn snake before you took me in. Just yeah. <laughs> I love it. And it, it, coming from you, it just sounds so right. <laughs> and I mean that And I mean that as a yeah, compliment. I'm a snake spotter. <laughs> <laughs> And we thank you for it, by the way. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> hey, hey, Roger, how important is track running order in an album to you? Does it matter much now uh, that people can just download oh, things? Did or... you hear that? Uh, no, okay. No. Um, a, a track running order? Yeah, is, is that is that important to you now? I mean, so many people just download certain things. I used to, I, I thought it was, I used to think it's so important how songs are set well, I, up on an album. Yeah, I can't, I can't get out of the habit of it. Of it. Yeah, I mean, right. I've, I've always done it ever since recording with family. Mm-hmm. Of course, you like things to flow. And I realize now people just sort of, you know, yeah, like you say, just download one track. Yeah, that, that, stinks. that stinks. <laughs> that really but stinks. But ha- you still have to have the flow of the flow of it. Of the album, I mm-hmm. think. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if I hit it right on this album. I tried, I tried for weeks. I have to say, <laughs> I drove Polly mad. Kept changing the order. <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, a, a, as a, as a fan, it certainly works. I always, I love to listen to Good. my music while driving in the car. Whenever I get a new yeah, CD, yeah. that's the way. That's my favorite way of listening, and it just flowed yeah. beautifully. So, Good. that's no, what made good. me think. I, you know, gosh, it, it does matter. It really does matter. So. Yeah. Kudos oh, yeah, to you. So, well, I, I try very hard for that because mm-hmm. I, I realise that for me, I, again, it's just from the, the 60s thing. Yeah. Albums have to flow. You know, the music has to flow from one to another or, or even if it's just a storyline. I like to do that as well if I've written one song. Then if, I, if I'm writing another song, I like to just stick a kind of a little thought from the other song into it. So where just to make them tie, you know, make people yeah. think, oh, 
And yeah. uh, you know, just give people something to think about as opposed to just listening. Yeah. My, uh, my, uh, my older brother, when we were growing up, he was the one that always had the cool albums, you know. And, <laughs> and he always used what to say... You, what did you have, the monkeys? <laughs> uh, well, Herman's Hermits first. <laughs> and definitely the monkeys. <laughs> but he would have... He turned me on to so many great sounds. You know, and 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 family music in a doll's house. I, I, it was so cool and psychedelic. And I mean, that's of course, I think how most of us first heard family. But I heard that from my yeah. brother. But he used to say he 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 looks at albums as books, and the songs are the chapters in that book. And you know, when you say you know, it doesn't matter how track listing is, is presented. Yeah. It is. It is like a whole composition. And anyway, I appreciate the way you, you do that. Good. Good. Thank you. Don't love me like liars. Little of my childhood day. Showered me with reasons to follow in their way Breaking bread with angels Tuned to rock and roll Eight miles high with the birds On a Chelsea dawn box roll Was young and foolish
I, you know, I want our listeners to know, please visit chapo.com. Really nice, really, really nice website. Um, get all types of uh, the news on, on Roger, Roger Chapman yeah. and family. It's a guest book, really. Yeah, we haven't kind of, it's not a business thing. Mm-hmm. It's just a guest book, you know, friends writing. And all yeah, but... I um, my, my version, it's a private, it's a private Facebook, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's nice to visit, so... Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I certainly want to get back to life in the pond, but can we go back a few years? I just have a couple of family questions for you, if you don't okay. mind. Um, is it true that Kim Fowley suggested the name Family? Yes, oh, absolutely. And, and it had something to do with what you guys were wearing? Uh, yeah, well, we, we kind of came up with this uh, brainwave uh, <laughs> of wearing demob suits to go on stage. Mm-hmm. Which were like the gang, like the old gangster films, right? You know, uh, uh, you know, think of those black and white things with the trilbys and all that nonsense. Sure, yeah, okay. And um, so we we decided that this would be a good idea to go on stage. In. <laughs> and uh, God knows now, but I mean, uh, anyway, we we did this. And we weren't wearing them when we met Kim. Um, Kim, we were introduced to Kim because he was in London, and um, obviously he was quite a successful producer mm-hmm. in his day. Um, and so we met him in, in because we lived in Leicester. We come from the, originally came from Leicester in the Midlands. So we drove down to London for the day. Met him in a studio, and uh, he says, "I've seen pictures of you guys, and you look like the family." Of course, his version of family <laughs> was not ours. Our version of family is mum, dad, sister, and brother, <laughs> right. cousins, and uncles and aunts. Um, but his version of family, of course, is. Who's the a mafioso style? <laughs> right, more of a godfather this type. Gangster, of, yeah. The gangster type. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's where he came yeah, from. So that's but, I mean, as it happened, it was just that era when I assume San Francisco and the West Coast is really starting to take off with um, acid and hippies and blah blah blah. Yeah. It sort of got tied in with that, you know, fa- all family. Oh, hello, everybody's together. You know, everybody's in the same, coming from the same. Uh, down the same line, you mm-hmm. know. Sure. Um, f- f- so family was in, but I mean, uh, and then somebody said, "Oh, it might be a good name for the band." Mm-hmm. I actually thought it was shit. I have to say, oh. I, re- I just thought it was really naff. Really? Any- yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> 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 but anyway, um, anyway, it got voted in, mm-hmm. it, so we well, so we became family. Mm-hmm. I, I guess that's part of some of the don't mind my uh, friend some of the shit you have to put up with if it's a group effort you do have to kind of compromise huh well yeah so but we that's how we worked as a band too you know i mean mm-hmm. uh, we used we were all kind of interested in various kinds of music i, I was a more or less pure rocker you know yeah um and you get others that were interested in classical jim who was playing saxes and harmonica he got very into jazz of, of, of the age then, you know, and um, this, that, and the other. But we never, we integrated it all into the songs. You know, I, I, it was just one of those things where the five of us, we just, uh, mm-hmm. we just integrated all, all, the, all, the, all the kind of music we liked and put it into the songs we were writing, yeah. you know. Do you think, Do you? because, th- I mean, your first two albums, at least to me, were, were more psychedelic. And then as you guys, as the group progressed, um, you know, your sound changed here and there. <coughs> you think it's because you think it's because you had a change in personnel? That, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's kind of... That's exactly it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah that's not what I figured, too. I mean, uh, we, we had, um, yeah, John, John Willie Weed took over from Jim when Jim left. Right. Um Oh, is that no? That's not true. Rick Gretsch left. Sorry, the the bass player. Uh, and oh yeah, John then John took, came yeah. in with violin, yeah. guitar, and, mm-hmm. and picking up the bass really to play in the band with family. Yeah, but um, John was very much a a Joni Mitchell come West Coast uh, folky type player. This and the other, so that had a a, a huge influence on it. Yeah. But, I mean, if you think it, it's the... I mean, I'm only kind of getting it together now. Is that, like I was saying five minutes ago, where everybody came from almost a different musical viewpoint. Mm-hmm. 
and and that all became attached to the the songs that Charlie and I were writing. It um, as soon as we got a new musician who had a different kind of musical viewpoint, that became an influence immediately. Mm-hmm. I mean, we were sharing and sharing all the time. You know? Yeah, I, like I said, I, I, I'm a layman. I don't know if I could get into the group effort. I mean, I think I would rather be a solo performer. <laughs> you know, I, yeah. it's it, it's got to be a little tough, no? Would you prefer solo work, or is that a bad, is oh, that no, an unfair no, no, question? I prefer solo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. I, yeah, yeah. I, I can see that. Sure. Um, yeah, there needs to, there needs to be a leader. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't mind even working for other people if, if they <laughs> yeah. make, you know, if they're kind of calling the shots and making the mistakes or making the good the good moves. Mm-hmm. That's fine by me, but I, uh, this sort of democratic band thing doesn't. No. Doesn't, yeah doesn't work for me. All right, I'm, I'm going to put a bow on the family talk with this. Um, that, I mean, what a, what a compilation. Once Upon a Time, the Abaka oh, yeah, 14th yeah, yeah, disc. Yeah. Can, can we spend yes. a couple of minutes just talking about that? Fan- Once Upon Absolutely. a Time, it's like the definitive family compilation. 14 discs. Can you tell us, uh, you know, about that? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. We got an award for it. Uh, yes, right? No, no I mean, I... There's not much I can tell it because I. It's got I every album, correct? Of, yeah, plus lots of throwaways and stuff. But the record company, which was Snapper, who put it out, uh, or at least that's the British label, for, for what I know of, uh, they did a fantastic job. But I mean, they really investigated every nook and cranny and found these stuff. I mean, you. I don't a surprise. I, I'd never heard of really, you mm-hmm. know. And they they just found it, put it in. Now, now when and you I say they found it, where, welcome. where'd they find it, Roger? When you said they found um, it, well, I, I had, I mean, I had some old, dusty old tapes and all that nonsense. It's, it sounds romantic, but it's not really. <laughs> it, cause it was stuck in the attic, you know, one of those. <laughs> Uh, just boxes of this stuff, wow. and I really, never really took any notice. Holy they said, smokes. "Have you got any stuff?" So I said, "Well, you know, like, like little." little bits of quarter-inch tape and this, that, and the other, and they went through the lot. Um, I wondered, you know, again, it was either that. I was glad to get it out of the house, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. That, 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 those are treasures you had. You're, you're being too humble. <laughs> yeah. Well, but the thing is, if they're treasures, then they put them down so I can listen to them. I would never be able to listen to them before that. <laughs> before that, they were just a, a nuisance. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> To gathering dust. Oh my! Oh, how can you say <laughs> that? Oh my gosh! <laughs> well, I'm not a nostalgic character, you know. Really, you know, no. I don't. Kind of, I don't live in the past at all. Mm-hmm. You know. No. Well, um, yeah. Well, that's I obvious from the mind, new album. I, I don't mind some musical memoirs, but at the same mm-hmm. time, you know, I mean. I'm, Today's today, you know. Yeah. Well, listeners, check it out, please. Uh, Once upon a time, you can ca- catch it on um, on Amazon and on. Uh, the website. Now, before we, uh, my goodness, I can't believe how quickly the time went. Before we say goodbye, I want to get back to life life in the pond. Yes, um, please. Yeah. Now, I'm a child of the 60s. And I guess because of my great brother, Bill, we used to overinterpret things. And may I offer my very unmusic interpretation of the cover? Of the uh, with the shark, life in the pond. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I take that as as a statement that life, possibly to you, but a pond is an enclosed area, and there's that shark, and there are always sharks waiting to get us, get at you. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you got it in one. <laughs> it, it, it's such a cool, cool cover. I mean, it says so much. Yeah. And well. It- it was actually done by a friend of mine, and we'd been we'd been kind of making a design together uh, for the album, uh, and but then I changed the title. I had a completely different title for the album. I was scrabbling about for it, and then all of a sudden, I just came up with "Life in the Pond," mm-hmm. which is actually a line in one of the songs. Yes, mm-hmm. but. Uh, and I said, right, okay. And I said to Paul, what do you think about Life in the Pond? He says, that's a good title. So I says, right, that's it. I'm not going to change my mind anymore because I'm a terror at changing my mind. 
mm. uh, getting another idea, you know, quickly. But then, uh, anyway, I said to John, who's my pal, the, the designer, come artist. John Davis? I said, yes, John yeah. Davis, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I said, John, I'm going to, I'm changing the title and I'm going to call the album now Life in the Pond. And he come back, it must have been three, four minutes later, he said, what do you think of this? And I went, you've got to be joking. And he sent me that. It's incredible. Mm-hmm. It, it is. And it's, it's, yeah, I mean, it, I went, you know, it was just, um, and it was as quick as that, because he's an artist, he does these things quickly, you know, like a bit of black, uh, black fingernails or something. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and, but I mean, it, it, basically the original was, was um, it, it's like a copy of a Banksy, isn't it? Yes. That's how, that's how we kind of mm-hmm. took it, you know. It's got Monet's, um, Water Lily's, uh, pond, you know mm-hmm. the the gentle this that and the other, yeah. but then he he just stuck the uh, the shark's tail. You got that you fin know. stick. Oh man, it's it, it is really. I mean, people can see I mean, it it's now. Amazing. It's speaking. Yeah. yeah, really, really, and th- that's what I miss about albums too. Not to get too off, but I mean, it was just albums were such an expression of the artist's message as well you know. And now yeah, again, of course. I don't want yeah, to sound like an old fart. Oh, it, they yeah. download things now. I don't want to. Go there, but there's so much missing. If, you, if I, that's why I love physical copies, like CDs. I have to have the CD. I don't want to download yeah. things. But so <clears throat> another favorite of mine from the album, and I, I, I listened to the song. And I said, "This is just we are on the same page." Green is guacamole. Yeah. Gag. <laughs> oh, I mean, you know, you you take to task the the. Media, the politicians, um, with the the hypocrites, as you put it. Yeah, um, yeah. If I can, if I can just take a, a side a line about people who'd sell their kids down the river if they're getting what they want. I mean, well, don't they? You I sound, seen yeah, you, <laughs> you, you, you know? sound pretty pissed off about the the uh, the, oh, wow. the way things are now in the media and with politicians. Really, really. I mean, it, it's, but it is a motion that makes me drive anyway. That drive, that drive makes mm-hmm. me drive. So it makes me write, you know, that drives me to write. It's the emotions that come out. And I kind of just have to put them on paper. And I'm not afraid to say them because I want to say it anyway. Yeah. Um, and the, again, the, well, there are so many things happened in the past four or five years. Politically, especially for you people, and, and we have we have we have a similar thing here, mm-hmm. not quite as bad as yours. I'm I'm pleased to say, but at the same time, we've got a pretty pretty bad bunch here too at the moment. Um, they're just they are hypocrites and just yep. only in it for themselves, only trying to make themselves so much money. There's so much bent stuff going on, you know, and using the people as an excuse to. Just, I don't know, oh, just yep. sick and rest. Yeah, sick and rest. What, what can you say? I know. And yeah. um, and it, I, I definitely got the person, woman, man, camera, TV reference too. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, I, again, you just leave it to people to, to work it out, really. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Let's 
slither down the tarmac It said they slithered in for tea It slithered back to where they come from Person, woman, man, camera, TV We see them squirming for devotion The bullets fly right off the dial The loud mouths craving limelight Spreading poison with a smile The we green as fuck a morning To these two-faced hypocrites The we green as fuck a morning There's a true life tremor The better part of this content Racist names are rearranged To protect the resident The weak green as fuck a What they're made of These yellow jerks with hangers on Would sell the kids down the river If they get in what they want There's just too many double dealings Too many backstabbing days If they ain't lying, then they're sleeping Oh, maybe dead, oh, come the day Oh, we green as fuck a morning To these two-faced hypocrites We green as fuck a morning Do we believe this beggar man? family came over to England to meet our royal family for tea. <laughs> <laughs> our royal family. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> yes, I know. In quotes, in air quotes. Yeah. Um, uh, Roger, I'll tell you, it's, I, 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 um, I feel so honored to have had the opportunity to speak with you. And everyone, please, life in the pond is such, I mean, top to bottom, like I said at the opening, 11 tracks, uh, you know, you know Roger Chapman, everybody. You love him, and he just you you deliver in 2021 as as strongly as you did back when we, when you first started out. And it is such a blessing to have you in in our musical lives, Roger. Well, thank you. I mean, that's I feel very honored about that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, and the honor's been mine. And that's all um, I could ask for. Thank you. Thank you, and best of health and safe travels to you, Roger. Thanks so much. The same to you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye now. All the best.
And now, folks, it's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.